Hi friends, I'm Sarah from Budget Girl and I'm a loud and proud member of the debt-free community. Let's get into it. So first off, if you don't know me, I paid off $33,000 worth of student loan debt in just three years on a tiny reporter's salary of $26,000 a year. I've been a longtime member of the personal finance YouTube community, and I believe that we can all make our financial lives better and meet all of our money goals with the aid of a budget. If that sounds like something that you would like to be a part of or learn more about, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button and like this video, because today we're doing the debt-free community tag, and I'm coming at you from my office, which has never before been seen on YouTube. I uh, finally decided to make it a space where I could film uh, on a budget, of course. The only things that I didn't already own, these are just, I had this desk, this painting was $20 from Ross, the salt lamp was five bucks, and that fiddly fig was eight bucks, so, and I made that painting, so, frugal office tour complete. Two videos in one. Thumbs up for that, pretty please. So let's jump in to the debt-free community tag. I was tagged by Kelly from Freedom in a Budget, the originator of this tag, and I was so thrilled to do that. So let's jump into her questions. So question number one is, how did you originally hear about Dave Ramsey, and what did you think of him? So I heard about Dave Ramsey back when I was in college, racking up that student loan debt from my aunt and my uncle who were familiar with his plan and I believe were using it to kind of pay off their house and the roof and everything, which they've all done since. But at the time, I didn't read the book. I just kind of overheard a little about the plan and I figured, like most people figure when they're going to college, that I'll just take out the loans and then when I graduate, I'll have the money to pay them off. Of course, I went into the extremely lucrative field of journalism and that became not the, not the good plan. <laughs> so uh, I rediscovered him, I guess, after I got laid off and had all this student loan debt and really knew I needed to get my financial life together and somehow his name was still in my brain. So I looked him up and I read the total money makeover from cover to cover and I swore to myself that I would never be that scared about money again and I haven't since. It's a, it's a wonderful plan and it was exactly what I needed at the time. Number two, what is the craziest piece of financial advice someone has given you that you just had to shrug off? So I have a lot of people have told me these. Several people told me that I should do the 10 year public service forgiveness type thing for my student loans and just pay it off over a long period of time instead of sacrificing and doing it in a very short period of time. and. Well, I wish I could tell them now that less than 1% of people who have applied for student loan forgiveness actually get it. It's not being paid out, especially not as promised, and a lot of people who were paying on that monthly minimum for 10 years now still have their full balances to pay, and it's such a tragedy, but I personally am so glad that I didn't do that, and that so many people here in the debt-free community are not about that, and that they are just trying to get it out of that debt out of there so that they never have to think about it again. It's certainly not give away minimum payments for a decade of their life in the hopes that that might be forgiven. Number three is what is the hardest place you had to give up shopping and or eating at? So back when I was trying to get out of debt, I had a little bit of a shopping addiction going into it and I knew this about myself. I would just go bargain hunting. I would go shopping just for fun. It, like if I had some spare time and a couple of dollars in my wallet, I would just go and spend money. I didn't pay attention to if I needed the things or if they would enhance my life. I just spent because they were a good deal and I couldn't resist things on clearance. So generally everywhere, like Target clearance was hard to give up. Dirt cheap, if you've never heard of that store, it might be a southern chain, but it's like kind of scratch and dent type items and you have to go and it's, it's a treasure hunt. And I bought so much stuff there that I, of course I no longer have anymore. None of it matched. It was ridiculous. Uh, fortunately, in the latter half of my debt payoff, I moved to a tiny town in Arkansas where the only store was Walmart and that was never an issue with me avoiding that. 
So not saying I'm better than Walmart, just saying wasn't an issue. I didn't like need that cute stuff. So they have some cute stuff. But yeah, definitely Target and like dirt cheap. Question number four is what baby step are you on and how long have you been there? So I am officially baby step seven. Yay! And I haven't been there for very long actually. It took me a little time after finishing my fully funded emergency fund to do all the investing research and actually figure out where I wanted to put the rest of my 15% towards retirement. If you're not aware of the baby steps, baby step one is to save $1,000 in a micro emergency fund just in case something happens. Baby step two is paying off all of your debts in smallest to largest amount order regardless of interest rate. Baby step three is saving up three to six months worth of expenses. And I'll link a video down below where I talked about how I determined how much to save for my three to six month emergency fund and how I was able to complete it super quickly. And then baby step four is to up your retirement contributions to 15% because I have a teacher's retirement savings through my work. It doesn't work exactly the same way a traditional 401k would so i had to invest in other retirement areas and i'll have some videos coming up on that soon and then i actually got to skip baby step five and six because that is paying for college for your kids and then paying off your house i don't have any kids currently if i ever do have kids i'll go back and do that step and right now i'm not currently saving for specifically a house I probably will start saving for a down payment on a house within the next couple of years, but I'm just not quite there yet. And then baby step seven is to build wealth and give. And that is where I'm at. And it is the most wonderful place to be. If you had told me four or five years ago that I would be here now, I, I would have said, God, I hope so, but I probably wouldn't have believed you because I thought it was gonna take me a lot longer to pay off my debt. And the last question is, what is something that you want to do once you reach baby step seven? So there are a lot of things that I wanna do in baby step seven. One of them is travel, and I haven't quite had the opportunity to do that yet. I had several weddings over this past year and a half or so since I've been debt free, and I needed to travel for those. And I also had a um, professional conference I needed to use my vacation days for. So even though I can afford to travel right now, I don't have the vacation days for it. So I'm working on that. Um, but I also want to just look for more opportunities to give to people around me. I recently started kind of a Brighton People's Days fund in my budget and it gives me the opportunity to look out for ways that I could improve the lives of people around me and things that I hear of. So one of the things I recently was able to contribute to was a friend of a friend of a friend has a child who needs a helmet for medical reasons. And she just put something out on Facebook saying that this child really needs it and they couldn't afford it. And without even thinking, I was able to just go to their GoFundMe page and contribute to it because I have that designated line item in my budget, just making it so I look out for the opportunity to give. And that has been so personally rewarding for me. And I want to just do more and more and more of that and just enhance the entire world around me. I know that's dreaming big, but why not dream big? I just want to help people around me. And I, I'm so grateful that I'm in a position that I can do that now. So those are all the questions in the debt-free community tag. That was really fun. Thank you so much for Kelly for tagging me and Angela in our, from Our Life on a Budget also tagged me in this. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that, friends. I will list all the questions below. If you would like to pick up the tag, I would love to hear from you as well as the tags of everyone that I can find that has done this so far. I'm also specifically tagging Jen from The Budget Bounce and Justine from Debt Free Millennials. I'll link their channels below to do this because I wanna see your answers. Also, for all of you who don't have a channel, I would still love to hear your answers to this, especially the last one. I wanna hear from all of you guys, what do you wanna do in Baby Step 7? What will be rewarding for you personally, professionally, financially? Let me hear it, because I love to live vicariously through you guys, and I also love to get ideas. It's my favorite thing about this community. Also, if you are not familiar with the hashtag debt free community, it's all over the place. It's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, just type in the hashtag 
and you'll see a lot more wonderful, educational, inspiring videos like this, and I hope it encourages you to better your financial life. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe if you're not a part of the Budget Girl channel. I have a lot of cool stuff coming up and I wouldn't want you to miss it. I'll see you guys next time.